Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to make a video on what materials I use for modding, why I use them, and where to get them. So, we're going to start off with something pretty simple. Super glue. Uh, you can get these at, uh, you know, just about anywhere, Walmart, wherever you can find it. And I recommend going for the slightly higher quality, kind of in this plastic casing, like it's the Gorilla brand. Reason why is it's a lot more reliable and it doesn't like clog up. And when you're gluing, you're unscrewing, screwing it back, gluing a lot. You kind of want something very reliable. I wouldn't recommend going with the thing in the uh, cheap plastic or cheap like little metal things for you can, like a three pack for 99 cents or something. Those are okay, but I'd recommend going with something a little more expensive but a lot more reliable. For spray paint, uh, again, this can be found at any hardware store. This is a uh, rust paint, and it's black, glossy. So it's kind of nice to get kind of a glossy look here. You can see seven by seven cutter cube. Oh yeah, by the quick note, I'm redoing really this over the next week, so uh, it just didn't come out good enough. So yeah, uh, video will be out that in about a week, and then I'll ship it to the winner. Anyways. Uh, so I use this rust coat, it's pretty cheap, you can get it at your uh, hardware store, it's like 7 bucks. And this particular one worked pretty well. Alright, for sandpaper I use 220 grit, and that's pretty much the shiniest I use, I don't use anything uh, finer than that, even though I probably should. This is just gator grit. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where I got this, or I just found it around the house. Probably could get it at your hardware store again. Uh, there's really no point getting it from anywhere else. You, you can definitely find this stuff locally. And then also, uh, again, the same brand, 50 Grit. And this is what I use for much rougher sands. And I also recommend creating tools. So here is just a, uh, it was like a handout wooden stick. I'm pretty sure a stir stick for paint would work well as well. And I just cut out a section of this rough grit, and then I super glued it on here. And this is actually really nice for, uh, instead of moving the whole cube along sandpaper, that can get annoying and mainly just makes the sandpaper move around. You can like hold it and then just go like this, and you can really, uh, really just accurately sand what you need to sand a lot easier create little tools like this. I also have like a, and it's not here, I'm not sure where it is right now, but it's like a 2x4 chunk like this long with the fine stuff like just use some Elmer's glue and just glued it on and then that was like my polishing uh, piece of wood and that is very very useful so little things like this can be extremely useful when you're using sandpaper. For my belt sander I use sander here. Basically it just the sandpaper comes down like this and you just push the pieces up against it and then this is flat so then you can kind of do some rough sanding. Unfortunately this little metal piece back here is slightly bowed so I can't really use it for final flat sanding but I can use it to like get rough and I also have very rough grit sandpaper here. It also has this wheel that spins and they both kind of spin together, but uh, it's completely useless for puzzle modding. It's a Mastercraft, I think it's what it's called. Uh, this was a Christmas present, so I don't know where this you could get this. Probably the hardware store again. And kind of around the top of power tools here. I don't have my Dremel, but uh, it's really nice to get like a set like this. You got all your your pieces, a bunch of grinding things. Lots of sandpaper discs. Uh, I never really use this little extension which you can attach onto it so you can hold just a, kind of like a pen. But uh, I'm not sure what brand this is. Dremels are pretty cheap. But uh, again, probably a hardware store for uh, Dremel. On to stickers. I use vinyl sheets. And you can see here I've been kind of experimenting with ways to make uh, custom puzzle stickering easier. So you can see here, you can already kind of see an outline of 7x7 face. 
This was just a little bit of an experiment. Uh, anyways, these are pretty cheap. They're like, I think, $2. And these are quite big from Cubesmith. So, 3 by 3 is like that. Uh, and also, where I get stickers for just stickering custom puzzles, kind of like this. This is a custom puzzle, but it still has a normal face. Uh, I really like Cubicle. So I'll link, I'll link everything in the description, by the way. Yeah. I guess I'm starting from now, because everything else uh, you don't really buy online. You just get around your s or locally. So, yeah. Uh, the Cubicle also sells sticker sheets, but they're not as big as this. Uh, I think they're slightly bigger than the 7x7 face, so you pretty much get a set of it for... A 7x7 or smaller project, and that's it kind of deal. Like, uh, this sticker sheet has been used for every single puzzle that required blue stickers. So, like this, this 9x9 barrel, you get the idea. So, very useful. So, that's kind of it for stickers. Alright, for epoxy sculpt, I use Aves Epoxy Sculpt, and I'll leave a link in the description where I get it. Uh, quite expensive, the shipping on that place, and it's overall quite expensive, but very worth it. Uh, I've never had a problem with this stuff. This is just part one. Whoops. So there's like two parts here. Uh, and this is four pounds. Now, four pounds... It's going to cost you about like 70 bucks, I think, or thereabouts, maybe slightly more from that website. But you got to realize that these two things could have, like, have made every puzzle I have ever shown on this channel. Every single one. 9 9 by 9, nine, by nine barrel. This, uh, you know, these, like, there's just so many of them. All of these puzzles, uh, and many, many more could be made from these two. Now, not all of them. I did get a smaller one pound size, which I recommend for beginning. Uh, it's, it's a little bit cheaper, it's like 30 bucks. And this will also make you quite a bit. You could make, you know, a seven by seven cutter cube, a little mini tetrahedron, you know, five by five barrel cube, a couple three by three epoxy sculpting mods. A lot of bang for your buck. You can get quite a lot of modding out of... Again, this is just one part, but... Recommend starting off with something like this. And this will last you a little bit. And then, if you like it, you can move on to like something like this. Uh, which is quite a bit more expensive, but... These two, you know, have made this... This, which is just basically a blob of epoxy sculpt. The 9x9 barrel, which is gigantic. Both of the spiral cubes. Another 5x5 barrel. A 3x3 barrel. A 2x2 barrel. And many more, because it's not finished. I still, after all that, have a fair bit left. So, epoxy sculpt. I get this stuff. And it works very well. I think this is stuff like... Uh, I think J.R. Cuber uses this stuff. So it's any of his stuff you've seen, you know like the, his 7x7 barrel, you, you, like quite a few people use it. There's also something called Millipud, and I'll post a picture of it right now. Now that is essentially the same thing as Epoxy Sculpt. You can look at that for that locally. Uh, some people have found it locally. I think Crazy Bad Cuber uses it, and he found it locally, so you can find it. And if you do, uh, I'd recommend going over that and this, because this is quite expensive. Even though it's very reliable, it is quite expensive. So, if you want the slightly lower budget option, you could probably go for Ape's um, Millipud. And I think you can get it off of eBay as well. I'm not going to leave a link to the description to it, because I haven't tested out the store. Every link I'm going to show you here is to things that I've actually bought and then tested, so you guys know it's, it's okay. And I don't really... I guess I haven't bought Millipud before, so I'm not. I can't 100% recommend it, but I think like Tony Fisher uses it and stuff. It's it's quite reliable anyway. Uh, but yeah, you can look for that locally and stuff. But I could not find any.
that's it for epoxy sculpt. Alright, so I'm going to split this into two parts here because there is a lot to cover and the rest is going to be slightly more in depth. Anyways, the last thing you need, uh, really recommend is a good uh, exacto knife like this. You could use a slightly more bulky like box cutter, but I don't know. I think that getting a slightly more pencil like one, like this just came in some kind of carving kit, like you can find these at hobby shops or places like that. Basically, it's so much easier than like the box cutter, which is a lot more bulky and it's a lot less accurate. So I recommend going for something like this, like an exacto, like exacto blade, you know, uh, with kind of this, and it goes to a fine point. You really want to get a nice fine point when you're cutting stickers. So that's it for part one. Thank you for watching.